Hey everybody, welcome back. If you're new, thanks for stopping by. As the title says, we are going to see if it is possible to upgrade the RAM and CPU in your Alienware R10. I didn't have plans to do this, but some have asked if it was possible, and others have just said it is impossible. Well, I would like to see what is possible with the R10. But before I get into that, I just want to mention that the Alienware motherboard has a B550 chipset which is what you would find in some motherboards for manufacturers such as ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, and so on. Those definitely have the ability to upgrade the CPU and RAM, and I believe it is possible with the Alienware. However, that's something we need to find out. Now, I don't have a 5000 series Ryzen CPU to test, but I have my Ryzen 7 3800X that is in my Corsair PC. While it is barely a step up from the 3700X in the Alienware, it is still technically an upgrade, and would show that other 3000 series CPUs with the AM4 socket would work. Also, I will mention that the BIOS on the Alienware is a bit limited, but CPUs are normally auto-detected by the BIOS and RAM as well, but you might have to make a few changes to get the correct speeds for your RAM. So let's dive into this and see if it is possible to upgrade these. Before we get into the upgrade, let's check out what I'm working with currently in the R10. The motherboard in my R10 is the AMMTS-SH Revision A00 model. More than likely yours is the same, but be sure to double check that, and if it's not the same, check to make sure it has a B550 chipset or newer. Now let's dive into the BIOS and take a look at what CPU and RAM I am currently using. If you have been watching my Alienware videos since the beginning, you should already know what I'm working with, but figured I should give a quick reminder. As you can see, we have a Ryzen 7 3700X, which has a base clock speed of 3.6 GHz and can reach 4.4 GHz at its max boost clock speed. The RAM that came with the R10 is 16 GB of HyperX Fury RAM with a clock speed of 2333 MHz, but is being overclocked by the motherboard to 2400 MHz as it shows here. Real quick, let's double check the task manager in Windows just to be sure it's recognizing everything correctly and matches what we saw in the BIOS. We are seeing that it shows the 3700X for the CPU, and the RAM is showing 16 gigabytes clocked at 2400 MHz. So, since everything checks out here and matches what we saw in the BIOS, let's go ahead, shut down the PC, and get this upgrade started. I went ahead and uninstalled the 3800X and the RAM from my Corsair PC off camera, just to save some time, so we'll jump right into the Alienware. I am going to speed up the footage for the uninstall of the 3700X and the HyperX RAM, but I'll jump back in once we're ready to install the upgraded CPU and RAM. Now that we have the CPU and RAM removed, here is my Ryzen 7 3800X from my Corsair PC that we're going to test with. The camera wasn't totally focusing on the CPU, you might be able to see it, but I can further confirm it is a 3800X once we have the PC up and running after everything is installed. I'll go ahead and place it into the socket, then we can move on to the RAM I'm going to use before applying the thermal paste and reinstalling the EVGA CPU cooler. The RAM I am going to use also came from my Corsair PC. It is 32GB of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro 3200 MHz RAM. While we don't need any RGB in this PC since it has a closed side panel, we are going to use it to test to see if we can upgrade the RAM in the Alienware. It is two 16GB sticks, so I will slot the first one here in the second slot from the left, and the other will go into the RAM slot furthest to the right so it is in dual channel mode. Once I have this one slotted in, I'll go grab the MX4 thermal paste as I showed you in the last video and get this upgrade completed. Then we can test this all out and see if these upgrades are possible in the R10. 
So, let's cue up the music and get the R10 put back together. Now that I've got everything put back together and everything is plugged in, I'm going ahead and booting it back up to see what happens. Now, I will admit this did not go as I planned and I ran into some trouble here, which I will go into detail here in just a second, but let's jump into the BIOS first and get all the settings set so we can test this RAM out and the CPU. And good news, the BIOS is detecting the 3800X, and if we scroll down, we are seeing all 32 gigabytes of RAM, but it's only clocked at 2133 megahertz. So let's jump into the advanced tab, then over to the performance options. Next, I will go ahead and scroll down to the memory OCXMP option, and we'll scroll through the options here for a second, but we need to go to customization. Once we have that selected, many more options pop up, but we're only going to look at the memory frequency. And as you can see, there are plenty of settings here and only goes up to 3000 megahertz, but we'll go ahead and select that one, save the settings and reboot and see what happens. Now, this is where my troubles began to start. As you can see, the screen is turning on and it acts like it's going to boot up, but you'll notice here in just a second, it says there's no display and it's not detecting anything from the PC. And it kind of kept doing this boot loop going back and forth and was looking around trying to figure out what was going on exactly. So let's take a closer look at the PC just to see what's happening there. Normally when booting up the PC, the keyboard would turn red and the amber standby light would turn blue and the screen would turn on. However, that's not the case. So I took a look at the Alienware light here and it was flashing a code. If you notice, it's flashing two times, waiting a couple seconds, and then flashing once. I'll just let it play a couple times here so you can see it for yourself. So here it flashes one time, two times, pauses, and then one more time here. So if we look up the diagnostic code, it says it's a system board failure, which is a little bit scary, but if we just clear the CMOS, it should reset the BIOS settings and let us boot again. To do so on the R10, obviously, you got to pull off the side panel. Then you'll need to look below the second PCI Express 16 slot to see the PWCLR and CMOS CLR jumpers there. To reset it, you'll need to unplug the power cable from the PC and then take that blue jumper and move it from the PWCLR to the CMOS CLR, which you can see here, and leave it there for about 5 to 10 seconds. Then, once you're done, move it back to the PWCLR, plug back in your power cable, and go ahead and boot the PC again. Now that I got the PC booted again, I ran into another diagnostic code. This time, instead of the two flashes and then the one, I ran into one that flashes five times, which I'll show you here. Once, twice, three times, four times, and five. So. Let's grab our diagnostic sheet again and take a look at what that means. So as you can see, it says this is a CMOS battery failure, which probably is unlikely, but there's a quick fix to this. All you need to do is unplug the power from the back of the PC, hold down the power button on the front of the case for about 10 to 15 seconds. I'd say do the latter just to make sure it uncharges everything and then go ahead and boot it back up. So. Obviously, when we move the jumper to the CMOS CLR, it reset all our BIOS settings, which is enabling us to boot again. Now, we'll have to go back into the Advanced tab and the Performance Options and set the RAM to a different setting here. 
Now, instead of selecting customization this time, I decided to try memoc1. So, I'm going to hit that, save the settings, and then we'll reboot, then jump back into the BIOS to see what happens. Well, that didn't totally go as expected, and it reset the BIOS settings again. So, let's quickly run back through those settings again. We'll go to the Advanced tab, Performance Options. For some reason, it disabled the overclocking, but we'll set that to Enabled. And then go ahead and select Memo C1 once again. Save our settings again, reboot, and then we'll come back to the BIOS to see if that made any difference this time. And now for the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and scroll down to the RAM and see what the speed is. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes! I was very excited to see that we weren't limited to the 3000 MHz RAM under the customization option. And it looks like MemOC1 actually is the option you will need to select as well in order to get it to recognize the correct speed on your RAM. With that all being correct in the BIOS, I'm going to jump into Windows, open up the Task Manager, and check the Performance tab to make sure the CPU and RAM are showing correctly there as well. When I got into Windows, my first action was actually to check CPU-Z, or CPU ID as some call it. It's the same program, they just call it both things. Anyway, so I jumped in here, I saw the correct processor, and then I was concerned about the RAM speed, but I remembered it goes off the current speed it's running at. So since nothing's going on, it shows a lower clock speed. So the real test is the task manager under performance tab. And excellent, 3200 megahertz RAM, which means it is working properly, and we got the correct processor under CPU. So that tells us you can, in fact, upgrade the CPU and RAM in your Alienware R10. Now, hopefully you don't have to jump through all those hoops, but if you select the Memo C1 under the overclocking in the BIOS, you should be good to go. Now, this confirms that you can upgrade to another 3000 series CPU, but what about a 5000 series CPU? Well, the great thing is AMD has this lovely website to tell you what chipsets are compatible with which CPUs. So let's dive into this page and take a further look to see what will work with the B550 chipset and your Alienware. I'll put the link to this page down below as well, you'll see it here, but this is for the socket AM4 B550 chipset motherboards. So first thing I want to note, it does say the 550 chipset will not work with any APUs like the 3400G and the Ryzen 3 3200G, so don't buy those. However, this shows the B550 is compatible with the Ryzen 3000 series and 5000 series. So don't just take my word for it. AMD says themselves that a 5000 series Ryzen CPU will work with a B550 chipset motherboard, which is what the Alienware R10 has. Now, as I said, I don't have a 5000 series CPU to test this out myself, but if AMD is saying so, it's probably a pretty high chance it'll work out just fine for you. So there you have it. If you want to upgrade the RAM and CPU and your R10 in the future, you'll be able to do so despite what some have said. Also, since I've already swapped out the GPU and CPU cooler with success in my previous videos, this confirms what Dell has said. You can upgrade your components and your R10 with ease. Well, take with ease lightly, as I ran into those issues in the BIOS, but hopefully my videos will help you avoid those when performing your upgrades. Again, I cannot 100% say that the 5000 series will work, but as it is a B550 chipset, and AMD says you can, I think you'll have about a 99% chance it will work. The 1% being if you get a faulty CPU for some reason. Hopefully that doesn't happen to any of y'all. You may want to double check with Dell on the 5000 series CPUs, but I personally don't see why it wouldn't work with all the information we looked at and the testing with the 3800X. I also hope this helps some of you out and helps you avoid some of the headache I went through when adjusting the RAM speed in the BIOS. Just make sure if you get a higher speed RAM to use the MEM OC1 setting in the BIOS. I know I didn't test any games today, but I will be completely honest. I do not plan to keep the Alienware this way and will be putting back the RAM and CPU that came with it 
since I need the 3800X and Corsair RAM for my Corsair PC. Well, that is all for me today. If you can click all those buttons down below for me, it helps me out and I would really appreciate it. I thank you all for stopping by. Hope you have a great rest of your day and take care.